Thank you very much, Kamran. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it gives me great pleasure to be here among you today uh, to talk about uh, one of the diseases that my department works on um, and uh, really focuses on a lot uh, as one of the 20 diseases in the Department for Neglected Tropical Diseases. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak today. I'm very honored. And uh, we do value the support provided by ISNTD and its partners in uh, prevention and control of dengue. We also appreciate the approach, and I'll speak, a little, uh, speak to it a little bit later, but we appreciate the approach because we are focused on a cross-cutting approach. We are looking at all the neglected tropical diseases in a more cross-cutting uh, way because we cannot, uh, we cannot silo the diseases. No matter what, at the country level, at the village level, these diseases are happening in sometimes the same people, in the same communities, and are dealt with by the same health workers. And so our approach has to be a concerted one. We do require the technical expertise, but we also definitely need to have some a cross-cutting approach that will help us deal with the issues in a more holistic way. So as you know, neglected tropical diseases affect more than one billion people and cost uh, most countries billions of dollars every year. But as Cameron said this morning, uh, diseases like dengue are now crossing borders, places where people never thought they would be, we're now seeing outbreaks of dengue. And Aedes albopictus is uh, a very versatile mosquito, knows no boundaries, has no limits, can stay in tires and then re and, and refocus in another country. And so we, we, we do have a, a serious issue with, with dengue. And it's something that we, we really need to look at uh, in, a, in a different way. And so the, the, the most affected people are those living in poverty. And we all know now that in recent years, there's been outbreaks of dengue, chikungunya, and other AIDS-borne uh, diseases like Zika. And this highlights the fundamental shift in our management and promote, to promote integrated and sustained vector control interventions. And yes, there is a push for vaccines, and I, I recognize that. I commend it because any tool in our arsenal is an important tool. But I believe that we need a comprehensive strategy, and that's, uh, that's what we, at WHO we are always trying to promote. But we also think that the vector side of things has not been given uh, uh, the, quite the attention it deserves. And this is one of the things that we really want to push forward, uh, particularly in our new roadmap. We are aggressively uh, uh, pushing for, for, for vector control. And we, are all, we also have a joint uh, uh, through the global vector control and response in, um, with, um, with the malaria program pushing for the best ways uh, for uh, a concerted effort in vector control. And so we know that uh, globalization, climate change, and expansion of the poor urban cent uh, set, uh, centers, as well as insecticide resistance, are facilitating the spread of Aedes aegypti and associated aboviral infections and putting more people at risk of vector-borne NTDs, not just dengue, but several vector-borne NTDs. And we know that in, in many countries, we now have uh, this group of people called the urban poor, li people living in these uh, in, in, in slums, in, in, in areas where, where there is less infrastructure than even the rural areas. So before we used to think, oh, you know, we have uh, issues with the rural areas. Now it's the urban slums that are really the places where um, we have the greatest hotspots of diseases. And with dengue, for example, those are some of the greatest hotspots of, of, of dengue, these urban slums. And they are growing by the minute as we speak. And so I think we need also a concerted effort with, with people, with the land use planning people, with the, with the city planners, all these people. We need to come together, and, and, and this coalition needs to be broader 
than research. It needs to be broader than, than vectors. It needs to take into consideration issues around climate change, needs to take into consideration issues around uh, urban development, and particularly uh, a, a particular focus on, 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 on healthy cities and urban slums. I think that way we have a greater chance, we have a greater voice. And so we, we are also confident that in the next uh, few years we'll have an array of vector controlled tools. There are many in the pipelines. We are at WHO, we've been looking at the diagnostic landscape for all the 20 diseases that we work on. And, the, it's, and we, are, we are hoping that we will have some improved diagnostics for dengue as well. And of course, there, are, there, is, there is still work around dengue vaccines, and we hope all this will bring down the burden of disease. But there is no one magic bullet, like with all the other diseases we've seen. There is no one um, uh, uh, elixir that will clear uh, all our problems. We will have to work hard, we will have to work smart, and we will have to work efficiently to ensure that we, uh, uh, um, we, we, we can really prevent and control dengue. We will really ha also have to work at the community level. We need our global strategies are nothing if they do not reflect what is needed at the local, at the local government level, at the village level. And so that is another area where we need to uh, 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 focus our work. At WHO, we are also reorganizing our work in line of the WHO current transformation uh, program and looking also at the post-2020 target. So we're looking at, we're developing a roadmap which is going to be starting from 2021 to 2030. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But I just wanted to say as part of our new roadmap, um, we, are, we are also really looking very seriously at cross-cutting issues. And so that's one of our, one of our shifts uh, in, 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 in thinking. So we're, we're focusing a lot on WASH and vector-borne diseases. We're looking at climate-sensitive diseases and mitigating the impact of environmental changes. And this we're doing in collaboration with other departments in WHO who are better at doing that. So we are helping out with what is the data we can provide for neglected tropical diseases in this area? What is the information that we can provide to make, uh, to make the case and help these other groups also advocate for better thinking around uh, what is happening? We're also keen to focus on delivery of vector control and preventive services in urban areas. And this is something I've said again, and I think that will be our next frontier. The urban slums are the, one of the key issues, and I, uh, I, and I'm curious if anyone is working in this area, I would be glad to get some, some feedback on what uh, is going on. And then, of course, universal, uh, universal health coverage, and looking at all of this in the context of, of PHC. In 2014, we had a, a, a dengue outbreak in Tanzania. One of the most interesting, or the sad parts for me, is that when people uh, came in, and this, this then came out, we, we then uh, did a study. So I was, I was uh, Director General for the Institute for Medical Research in Tanzania um, before joining WHO Afro and before becoming d Director for NTDs. And one of the things that got to me was that people who were coming in with fever and not being diagnosed with malaria were being sent home. And basically, the, all these people were being sent home to die, indirectly. B why? Because malaria was the key issue, malaria was the key for illness, and until people started recognizing dengue, getting rapid diagnostic tests, the, it was already far into, uh, into that outbreak. So I'm saying, so this, it's, it's an issue. So, uh, you know, this issue of diagnostics is something that is very, very close to my heart because I feel like we miss so many people. So many people go home untreated and maybe they survive, but maybe most of them don't. And I think that was a lesson we learned. So we then uh, created an algorithm with our colleagues from, uh, from one of the universities, Muhimbili University of Health and Allied Sciences. We created algorithms to then uh, allow people to say, if it's fever but not malaria, then this. 
And if it's malaria, then this, but follow up with this. So just to understand the dynamics of fever, and this is not for dengue only. There are several other neglected diseases which are, 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 are causing uh, are sources of fever, and we need to look more into, into that. Chikungunya, for example, is another example of something which is really under, uh, uh, underestimated. The burden is very underestimated. So now I'll just talk a little bit about, about our roadmap. And this roadmap intends to cover all the 20 diseases, uh, quite differently from the former roadmap, which covered, I think, 12 of the 20 diseases that we work on. The aim is to make sure that we put attention, equal attention to all the diseases. And that, for me, is key. And I think uh, as, as people who are keen uh, to uh, promote advocacy, I would also urge you to make the case for neglected tropical diseases. Make a loud case, yes, talk about dengue. Yes, we need important tools for dengue. But we also need a louder voice talking about neglected tropical diseases as a whole. Because there are still a lot of issues out there who are not going to have a champion, who are not going to have people speaking for them, who are not going to have researchers wanting to, to carry out any research in that. And so I would urge you strongly, while we advocate for dengue, let's advocate for the rest of the neglected tropical diseases out there which are affecting the poorest of the poor. The more marginalized the people are, the worse the, the, the impact of the disease is and the less attention uh, we, we, we get on it. Yesterday we were talking about snake bite and launching this new snake bite strategy. And it was just very moving to, and I don't know how many people have watched the, the movie Five Minutes to Die, but it's, it's very moving how, how such a problem can be so hidden with no, uh, with no, uh, with no um, um, uh, effort. And, and I'm glad for all the people who have pushed for snake bite. But at the same time, in the same voice, I'm asking us to push for everything that is, um, uh, is, is impacting neglected populations and do it through uh, a, a focus on a UHC lens and a PHC lens. So in our roadmap, what we have three major shifts. Our first shift is moving more away from vertical disease approaches to platforms to a platform approach. So this does not mean that we will stop working on the individual diseases, we will continue. But what we will do is look at the diseases and see what is the best way of delivering interventions. Rather than say um, this disease, that disease, creating competition between diseases, creating competition for funding. And what, what is the best way we can, we can work together? The second uh, shift is focusing on cross-cutting issues. So really not giving lip service to wash and vector control, but really actually embedding it in our roadmap. And so not saying, oh yes, we will. And I'm trying, I actually think I should, we're, we're trying to look for another word for the cross-cutting issues, because it's so broad. So, you know, people just say, oh, you can lump anything you want in there. No, this time it's serious. We really want to make sure that we get, um, we get the, these things uh, uh, clear. And then finally, um, our third major shift is, is a country focus a country focused for country impact. So yes, we will have global plans, but the countries will tell us what works best in their environment. And this very much comes from my own experience as a program director, receiving plans, very well-made plans, which sometimes I could not implement. And I think for this, I feel that we owe the countries uh, a, good, uh, a good direction so that they can plan in their context, in their specific context. So those are the three uh, major shifts. We have a web consultation out there, and we would like everyone's input on all the targets that we're talking about. We have um, lots of issues around vector control, which we'd love your input on, and appreciate your, 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 your input um, on. And I think at some point, maybe Raman will show a slide on with the link. Um, or if we have the, I don't know if you, anyone has the, uh, we, I do have a few uh, flyers which I can share. So 
On that note, um, I would, like, like, like I said, I really would appreciate your input because this is the first time we've actually opened it to a wide consultation. And the consultation will end in July, so your input is absolutely, absolutely valuable to us uh, because it will change what, because it allows us to ask questions about our targets. We invited modelers to come in, discuss our targets, see whether our targets made any sense, and then we put our targets out on the website for everyone. And the amount of interest we're getting from non-NTD people is what is exciting me the most, because we're getting things that we hadn't thought about. We are getting input on things that we, we, we had not, for, for example, the issues around cities. So I'm really excited about this consultation, and I do hope that you will, um, uh, you will also uh, uh, input into it. So colleagues, I've, I've spoken long, and I, and, I, and, I, and I really want, again, to thank you very much for the opportunity. I want to encourage the good work that's, that's going on. I, I think we, we, we have uh, a, a lot of work ahead of us. I think we should still focus on, 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 on looking at uh, our programs in a more cross-cutting way. I, we have a, a, a great, uh, we, we still need a lot of research, um, particularly looking at, at, at uh, new uh, vector control model uh, methods, uh, again, looking at, at diagnostics and vaccines. But I think the most important thing is a stronger partnership, a partnership that works across and that will be able to deliver across uh, the, the uh, issues around dengue. So a partnership that will bring in other groups of people, people that we normally don't talk to. Sometimes we end up most of the time talking to ourselves. Let's get the, let's get the, the city planners in the room. Let's get um, the engineers in the room. Let's get other people to come and help us with this, uh, with this burden. The other, and the problem, my last point, is the issue of data. In my own continent of Africa, the data is sparse. And I think that's a, a huge problem and a huge gap. And I think that's something that really as, as a community and as a, a group, we should uh, really focus on getting good burden estimates so that we can actually provide good interventions. I thank you very much.